back to CCU TV. I'm Sarah. And I'm Shelby. And as usual, we're kicking things off with School of Thought. The School of Humanities is still buzzing about election 2016, especially in light of the recent GOP and Democratic presidential debates. If you want to catch all the action and do so on the big screen, be on the lookout for the next debate watch party on December 15th in Laprino Hall, hosted by CCO's very own chapter of College Republicans. We want a Federal Reserve that involves so much in determining interest rates. We also need to look at root causes as to what caused the housing boom and the housing collapse. But the bottom line is if you want... Christmas is right around the corner along with CCU School of Music's annual Christmas Celebration Concert. This concert will feature 100 of CCU's finest instrumental and vocal students. Oh Holy Night will be the theme this year, leaning on the joy and meaning of Jesus Christ's birth. This concert will be held at West Bulls Community Church December 4th at 7.30 p.m. and December 5th at 3 p.m. Come celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ with us through special music and readings. Thank you. In the wake of the recent terrorist attacks in Paris, ISIS is once again making headlines around the world. For something a little bit more controversial though, we move to Utah, where a teacher at Salem Junior High School asked ninth grade students to create propaganda recruiting posters for Islamic State in Syria. The project was of course canceled after the school received complaints from parents, but this just goes to show how important it is to think carefully through your lesson plans before introducing something controversial to your students in your classroom. One of the questions that's been on our minds recently in the years since MMA has become popular is whether or not it's worse for you than boxing. Well, and at a university in Alberta, Canada, they put that to the test, and they interviewed some UFC fighters, and then they also interviewed some boxers, just to see which one had the most damage on their bodies. They found out that boxing is actually worse for you, where it had cases of major concussions, detached retinas, broken noses, and so on. So we all know now, if you want to be a fighter, UFC is the way to go. Happy break, CCU. To give you a heads up for when you return to school, Melissa Fryer will be speaking at a women's ministry event for Daughters of Grace Ministry December 1st in Laprino 170 at 7 p.m. Then on the 8th, come learn about Daniel, our final persons of this Bible series for the semester in Beckman 202 at 6 p.m. Enjoy your break, and we'll see you when you return. This is the part of the show where I'd normally tell you what's coming up on campus, but this time it's Thanksgiving break. For those of you sticking around, make sure you check out what's going on in the student union as the residence directors are hosting a special Thanksgiving meal just for you. Have a great Thanksgiving break, everyone. We're going to send it over to Jackie in Studio B, who's going to talk a little bit about our winter sports here at CCU. Basketball's in full swing this winter season. If you're still on campus this break, you can go to the event center at 5 p.m. on the 27th and 28th to watch our basketball teams compete in their yearly Thanksgiving tournament. After break, you can catch the women's team in the event center December 5th at 5 p.m. The women will be playing the School of Mines, so be sure to attend their first RMAC League game. Also on the 5th, right after the women play, you can catch the men playing their first league game against Mines at 7 p.m. On the 7th, you can watch our men's JV basketball team in the event center at 5.30 playing Lamar County College. Then on the 8th, you can see our women's JV basketball team playing Adams State in the event center at 5. Ski season is also starting up at, as A Basin, Copper Mountain, Keystone, and Loveland are now open. Enjoy the rest of your break, Cougars, and we'll see you soon. The fall play was Sense and Sensibility, and our roommate starred in it. Our entire kitchen is covered in all the bouquets that she got. For those of you that missed it, not to worry. We've got some highlights for you right now.
if you're more interested in the technical side of things, we're going to throw it over to Studio B again so Nick can talk about Tech Bytes. Music has always been a form of expression, and now we could do so through the journaling app Cove. Cove is the mobile app where you get to express your mood through your own musical creativity. In this journaling app, you place stones in a river to create music and convey emotion as effectively as possible, since words can only do so much justice. The original purpose of this app was to help teens deal with loss, but Ivor Williams and Alex Rothera saw more potential in this app and wanted to expand into something that can be therapeutic for everyone. After creating your short piece of music, you get to write a description about your creation and keep a daily log if you would like. With the tragedy that has taken place in Paris, many have rallied for an answer for justice. In this time of despair, France was not the only ones to retaliate against ISIS for these attacks. The hacking group known as Anonymous has declared a cyber war on ISIS, claiming to steal ISIS's information with the hopes of taking out ISIS's ability for having an internet front. Anonymous has recently put out a video on YouTube starting on the night of their attack with their responses towards ISIS. Anonymous is a controversial group, but their response is just one more indicator that all eyes are on Paris right now. Our prayers are with the people of France and Lebanon. And I'm Nicholas LaGuardia, and this has been your CCU Tech Bite. Thanks, Nick. If you're interested in seeing a little bit more of the behind the scenes of CCU TV, you can check out Nick and the rest of us make lots of fun mistakes in our blooper reel. You know, just earlier this week, I opened up my prayer request journal from last semester, and in January section, the first one was, pray for Paris, there's been terrorist attacks. And it was really eerie to read that and realize that what went on this past week was not the first time. And, uh, you know, the hashtag pray for Paris has been trending on all kinds of social media lately, and we recognize that it's not the only significant issue in the world, but it's definitely been in the news and on our hearts. So Jared's in Studio B with some more with something political. Friday, November 13th, a date in Paris, France, which will forever remain in our hearts. Seven people, including one identified as a security risk by French authorities for his radical beliefs, and another believed to be a Syrian refugee, killed over 130 people in a half hour via multiple attacks around the French capital of Paris. An additional 352 people were injured, some of whom are in critical condition. The terror attacks began around 9.30 p.m. as gunmen in a black car conducted drive-by shootings of customers dining in outdoor restaurants. Two attackers set off suicide vests at the State de France soccer stadium. Other attackers entered the sold-out Le Bataclan Theater, taking hostages and killing dozens. Each gunman wore a suicide vest containing the explosive chemical TATP, which was also used in the 2005 London bombings. By the end of the night, most of the attackers either killed themselves by detonating their vests or were shot by police. Islamic State in Syria, or ISIS, issued the following public statement after the attacks. In a blessed battle whose causes of success were enabled by Allah, a group of believers from the soldiers of the caliphate set out targeting the capital of prostitution and vice, the lead carrier of the cross in Europe, Paris. This group of believers were youth who divorced the worldly life and advanced towards their enemy, hoping to be killed for Allah's sake, doing so in support of his religion, his prophet, and his allies. ISIS is no doubt a radical and fundamentalist organization. Its ultimate end is global domination in the name of Islam. On that point, however, it is crucial to note that ISIS is considered a heretical sect. There are numerous sects within Islam, all of which claim to represent true Islam. In response to the attacks, French President Francois Hollande said, it's an act of war committed by a terrorist army, a jihadist army against France, against the values we uphold throughout the world, against who we are, a free country. The following day, French fighter jets bombed the ISIS stronghold of Raqqa in Syria in the first direct act of retaliation. During this tumultuous time, we must support France and mourn with its people, for we know firsthand the pain of terrorism. 
Secondly, we must exert extra caution, for ISIS has warned that this is just the beginning. So when you find yourself in a public setting, always identify the nearest exit and the closest solid barrier for cover. And do not be afraid to dial 911 if you see suspicious activity. This has been Something Political with Jared Cummings. Last year, one of our more popular segments was Cougar Spotlight. We're bringing it back this year. Kaylee Bernier is going to tell us a little bit about Lighthouse Church. Lighthouse Church is a new church plant based right here in Lakewood, Colorado, with several different CCU students. The pastor, Josh Shaw, was given a vision that the people of Denver were desperately longing for hope and a way towards love. But they were isolated, broken, and hurt. Because of this, God wanted to begin a new church, Lighthouse Church that would act as a lighthouse to bring those who were wandering and lost back home. Check out this clip to see what's happening now at Lighthouse Church. The first core piece of joining the Lighthouse Church family is you join in community with each other. You join in community with us. This is a place where I feel uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit and empowered by people to chase after what the Lord is doing. Um, so it's a powerful place to be. My favorite part of Lighthouse Church uh, is definitely the intentionality of the leadership. Um, I remember the first time I came to Lighthouse Church, they uh, came right up to me, uh, shook my hand, um, and then I remember coming back the next week and they remembered my name. Um, they remembered a lot of things we talked about, um, so that was very special. I want to love you. That's what this church wants to do. And we also want this family to grow because we believe that the message that's communicated here on a Sunday is the greatest message in the world. That there's a God in the universe that loves you. Everyone is welcome to Lighthouse Church, which, which meets every Sunday at 10 a.m. at Green Mountain High School. To find out more about the church or how you can get involved, you can visit their website at lighthousechurch.tv. I'm Kaylee Bernier, and this has been your CCU Cougar Spotlight. And Susan's closing us out once again with a special Thanksgiving devotional. We are in the Thanksgiving season, and it's always such a great reminder to give and show gratitude to those we love and those who serve us. Whether that is a waiter in a restaurant or a barista who makes his coffee, a pastor who tirelessly preaches every Sunday to fuel our soul, or a parent who continues to show selfless love and sacrifice. Let's slow down just a bit and take a moment and say thanks, maybe even through a handwritten note. 1 Corinthians 1.4 says, I always thank God for you because of the grace given you in Christ Jesus. All of us here at CCU TV want to say thank you for taking the time to watch. It is our hope that you are enriched through these broadcasts. And we pray that whatever we do here is all done for the glory of God. With everything that is going on in the world right now, especially all the bad news, this day we also want to say thank you to the one and only Jesus, the Savior of the world, who is the light in the darkness, who continues to make all things new through his redeeming love. So with that good news, dear ones, we wish you all a most blessed and happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Susan. I've been getting a lot of questions lately, you know, why can't I find CCU TV on YouTube? Here's a hint, search ccu.tv and make sure you subscribe. We can get a vanity URL from YouTube if we get 500 subscribers. So if you're watching this video on YouTube right now, down in the description box below there should be a bright red bar that says subscribe. If you hit that, it would help us out so much and it'll also update you when we post new videos. Thanks for joining us over Thanksgiving break. We'll see you next time for Christmas.